Hi, this is Nomingo. You are listening to BMI Bichara Mingo Ini. This will be my second part of my conversation and discussion on children under the last year as part of my policy analysis and my attempt to understand the current situation of our education policy in the midst of the pandemic. In this episode, I speak to the Petaling Jaya MP Maria Jean Abdullah to share her views and experiences particularly in the low-cost housing or flats in her constituency and what we can do for it. So, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, having me in your office. So, <laughs> this is a uh, this is a very short interview. Lah. So, in your opinion, oh, YB, uh, it has been two years since you got elected. Uh, can also. <laughs> so, it has been two years since you got first elected as an MP. So, prior to joining politics, uh, you were pivotal in the civil society organizations like Bursay. Uh, this That's one of your major... Um, uh, uh, organization that you were with back then. So reflecting back, how has your journey been? Um, it has not been what I I expected. Uh, being in Berse uh, and being in NGO is very much different, definitely, yeah, from being in a political party which uh, I have just I have joined, um, PKR, uh, Parti Keadilan. Um, I think that it's uh, one. Um, as a party member and also as a member of parliament, uh, I have the opportunity, to be honest, to be more in touch with grassroots, to to feel the heartbeat, yeah, so to speak, of uh, what the ordinary people are concerned about. And um, so that's why, I, um, shockingly, in Petaling Jaya itself, as a growing uh, city, we call ourselves a city, we have urban poor. Um, which have been uh, drastically neglected. Um, and, and if you read the newspaper, you will know it's Lomba Subang, uh, one, uh, it's uh, Desa Mentari, it's Desa Ria, um, in Tama Medan, it's also in Sri Satya. Uh, these are the so-called pockets of uh, poverty, but these are big pockets of uh, poverty that um, somehow in the economic plan, we have uh, neglected them. No matter how much money um, that the government say that they have pumped in yeah, to, for the B40s, uh, it's not reaching them. It's not to say not enough. It's not even reaching them. And that is the sad uh, part that implementation-wise, um, it's so uh, poor and weak that uh, you land up um, people not getting uh, the support that they need. So with the uh, onslaught of uh, COVID-19 and and to be honest, this change of government uh, to Perikatana National, it really has um, caused a huge impact to these communities because uh, they, they are actually not just marginalised, they are totally left out. Yeah? And it's actually um, relying a lot on their own uh, energy, to, uh, their capacity, or you know, um, help by NGOs, and some and uh, my my office and some, but we have limited resources, very limited resources, and what they need is really put, putting food on the table, and that's not coming through. Tallinn Jaya is one of the major cities in Malaysia. I think we have nearly about twenty cities in Malaysia itself, and often than not, we've been talking a lot about the addressing the issues of the urban poor and of course when as you mentioned right we are just touching on the surface of the bigger problem itself the iceberg itself is still very much unseen so with the movement control order we will call it mco 2.0 will be imposed for two weeks maybe more this time and among the poorest in your constituency like you mentioned are living in lembah subang the lembah subang one uh, low cost housing as well as lembah subang two the cemetery to name a few can you share about your experiences working with the hundreds of B40, if not hundreds, I think thousands of B40 families living in a low-cost flats? Um, I think that uh, one is the B40, yeah. But when the COVID-19 naturally um, uh, came in, uh, as you go along, you find that, you know, it's, uh, the M40s are also uh, affected. Those that are earning 5000 and below. 
they are dipping into either uh, they are dipping into their savings or they are actually they don't have savings but they need to um, survive on whatever uh, income that they have some have lost their jobs some have their salary cut down some have actually been asked to take long uh, indefinite uh, holiday so that category is where we have actually left them out yeah um, and we focus on the b40s the what they need is really jobs yeah uh, but the industries are not growing um, the SMEs yeah small medium uh, enterprises that uh, are supposed to actually be the pivot uh, for our economy the government is not um, putting their resources where it's needed to support them. You want to digitalize, help them. But the help is not enough. Yeah, um, The grants that are offered to SME doesn't um, cover those with lesser capital. They fall down the cracks. So, so in, in a way, uh, instead of having good policies and making sure that it reaches to the people and to the industries that need it, we, the policies are actually creating um, and marginalizing some, some, some industries, some of the uh, poorer people. The next question I really wanted to bring about is, you know, the thing where it's something close to my heart, where we're looking at students. There are students from primary schools, students from secondary schools. There are thousands of students that have no access to devices. So uh, with that, you know, what do you think, uh, maybe, about uh, this issue of um, you know kids in 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 your constituency who are unable to access to education? I think that um, the policy set up by the present government is unclear. Um, there's no prioritizing on the, particularly the schools and the universities. Because uh, just take the schools alone itself, yeah. Um, the government has actually announced in the um, recent budget that they will have they will cover five hundred schools, offer them uh, computers, um, but that one thing it, it hasn't rolled out yet. Okay, so when are they going to give these tablets or computers to the students? Um, there's no doesn't seems to get, be a timeline and that is worrying because um, now um, suddenly the, the Prime Minister has announced uh, Darurat yeah and it's going to extend to August which means that a lot of the primary and secondary students have not been to classes for almost one and a half years and you don't uh, offer them an alternative to encourage them to continue their interest in learning. Uh, one is actually this tablet. The other one is, of course, uh, making sure that, you know, the tutors are there to uh, coach them. But the uh, not having the equipment and not rolling out, it's, um, it's going to impair on a lot of students. Then if you look at um, Malaysia, yeah, we have uh, more than 10,000 schools. The budget is not even covering these 10,000 schools. Uh, 10,000 schools, you are talking about uh, 4.77 million students, yeah, primary and uh, secondary. Let's not talk about the university students. Um, 4.7 million students needs to be covered uh, if you want them to go uh, continue studying online. If you don't, it will be like uh, what I'm experiencing now in Lemba Subang 1. A lot of them dropped out, lose interest studying. Uh, they lay park. They are getting into all kinds of uh, unwanted uh, activities. They um, just just don't want to study anymore. Uh, even if the schools were to open, they are not keen to go back. So, uh, so what is the policy? I think that the policy priority has to ensure all students uh, be equipped with uh, a laptop or a tablet. Yeah, whatever is the cost. Uh, and to actually ensure that um, there are enough teachers. If you don't have enough teachers, then recruit you know, some of these undergraduates to actually help in the tutoring. Uh, otherwise, we are actually, like what you say, having a, a, a lost generation that will take another 10 years to recover. So maybe in your observation in uh, Lembah Subang 1, for example, um, they are about 
thousands of families there, about 3,000 families. So what we can see from the latest data uh, from the survey last year from UNF- UNDP and UNFPA showed that they are, there is a higher number, higher percentage of dropouts from secondary school students. Uh, what have Do you see any efforts done by the government to address the issue of the dropouts among the secondary students, you know, looking at Lembasu Banwang? They have done nothing. I, I, I'm not trying to be um, uh, uh, being an opposition and all that, but really, um, I'm just reflecting my experience last year. March until um, we finished the MCO in um, May, June. May, May, June, like that. Yeah, um, Nothing was actually offered. I asked to use the day one so that at least uh, some kind of tutoring can happen. That's also rejected. Um, if you're talking about uh, gadgets and all that, nothing was offered from the schools nor from the ministry. They were left to their own device. So if you have a handphone, you study from the handphone. Um, if you have a tablet or computer, but they forget that a lot of these students from the B40 one is they don't have the gadgets or that they don't have the data. Yeah, they don't have the money to actually support the data. Or sometimes, you know, in one family, the handphone are, are being held by the parents. So when the parents go out to work and they have to, um, the device is not available to the students. So they have to wait until their parents come back, maybe six or at night in order to study. So where is the interest to study anymore? YB, I uh, also would like to ask you, um, although the government rolled out education TV state, uh, you know, uh, TV pendidikan and all that um, on TV stations, on TV OK, uh, Astro Tutor, as well as NTV7, uh, from your observation and you talk to the constituents in the Basubang 1, have they, have, have they, these children, have they followed the uh, programs on TV? Uh, don't even talk about the programs on TV. Um, recently, I've been going around to the schools to distribute uh, sanitizers and all that. So I've been asking the teachers, how have they been able to keep up with their students? Yeah, And they are frustrated. The teachers are really frustrated because um, they, they have all their phone numbers. They will call them on a daily basis to check whether they are studying. Uh, some schools are quite good in that. But the students are not answering the phone calls. The students, um, they may answer, but they don't deliver the homework. Um, three is that the student just don't have a device to actually uh, do any of the work. Um, the only thing that I noticed in, um, there's a Chinese school um, in um, Damansara, uh, Kampung Damansara, where the students actually uh, hand in their homework. But even then, it's not 100%. So, there are many challenges that the teachers are facing. One is, um, they can't, one is they can't be going every house to check on the students, so they have to rely on handphones. So, um, they, they are at a loss how to motivate the students. And they are also at a loss as to how to provide them with a gadget um, because schools don't have that kind of resources to do so. And neither can the students come to the school because there's no gadget. Um, some of the computers are there, but they are not working. They are obsolete. Uh, I've seen a whole uh, lab filled with computers that don't work. Now, in, your, in your observation, do you think that there is a huge policy gap in this area? You know, right now we are facing this pandemic. Should we face another pandemic? Uh, are we prepared uh, in addressing this kind of issue, particularly education for children? I I like to stay positive that um, the Ministry of Education and whoever are involved will actually learn from this present pandemic and do better for uh, if in the event, touch wood, uh, we have another crisis, uh, whether health or whatever, um, that when there is a crisis, um, there are a few things that we need to prioritize. One is economy, yeah, uh, putting food on the table for people. Make sure that people actually have enough to eat. Secondly is their health. Third is education. Because education um, is important. We are talking about our future generation. If we don't educate them, then how can our country grow? 
with the lack of, for example, with the lack of devices for children in Lembah Subang flats, for example, and poor internet connection, uh, even some of them don't have television at home. Um, do you? What would you recommend to the government to improve in terms of uh, the the policy for education? Uh, in terms of uh, whether they may it will be a, a new normal in terms of a home based learning. Uh, what will you propose in a change of the policy? One is really I I feel that you know um, at one time if I'm not mistaken. Um, secondary level they were all given handphones yeah so why not now yeah why not why do not you equip every student um you can pay or you cannot pay or you can afford or you cannot afford uh, equip them with at least a tablet so that um one is uh, you can start with the online uh, tuition two is really to equip your teachers to be ready for this kind of online tutoring uh, some of them are not quite used to it and not sure how to motivate the students. So you need to think of ways to motivate the students and ensure that you know they continue um, having that interest to study. I, I think that a lot uh, can be done, but um, very sad to see that you know the education ministry is not seeing this as an urgent uh, problem. We already lost one whole year. So if this now we we don't do anything, we're going to lose uh, lots more um, in terms of our new generation. In addressing the lack of internet connectivity and also the lack of devices, uh, what do you think about what we call as an offline learning for children? Currently, in some other countries, they have television shows, they have radio stations, uh, they even have um, what we call as self-directed learning, home-based learning kits. Um, what do you think about that, Wavi? I think those are, are quite good ideas that we need to roll out. The problem now is implementation. You, we just passed the budget, but it takes. It shouldn't take so long to actually roll out all these programs because we already went through one whole year where students are not going to school. So. By January, we should be actually distributing all these uh, gadgets. The other thing that um, that I proposed in the parliament was actually turning the uh, community halls into uh, tutoring learning centers. Um, because you can't have kanduris and weddings and, and so forth. Why don't make you make good use of these uh, centers and turn it into learning centers where the students can actually come down from their flats or even the taman there are, there are community centres where these community centres will be equipped with the equipment for them to study online. There be, the teachers can, instead of being in the school, you get to come to the day one to actually teach. And you can do a rotation and we can also have the SOP. Yeah, from morning till uh, till after evenings or whatever. You can, there's so many things that you can actually uh, implement. But it's not happening. We, I asked for permission to use the day one. Um, it's like, um, no. And we seems to be um, caught in that old thinking, yeah, yeah? Uh, of not thinking out of the box to say that, you know, okay, there's a problem. How do we resolve that problem collectively? There's no, no effort to do that. So it's, it's an idea where turning... Um the low cost flat community centers into what we call as pusat internet internet centers for uh for these children. Yeah. Yes. I think that is uh useful because um then you can have the internet you you can you have everything conducive for students who still want to study. Uh, will definitely come down. I I can give you an example. I started um this uh Jombacha yeah, um, for kindergartens and primary schools. So uh, when we started that program, we thought that only that category of uh, stu uh, students will actually come and join us. But instead, um, from four, from five students joined. And the shocking thing is that they couldn't read. They couldn't read. Although they have been schools from primary to secondary, they couldn't read. So there is that gap. 
and we are not addressing those gaps. So if you now with uh, more than a year not going to school, you lose this generation of people. On a final note, uh, what would you say uh, to um, to in order to address uh, this sort of problems? In you know we're just beginning of the year, and uh, what would you say to address this sort of issues, in, particularly when it comes to education, uh, where primary um, secondary uh, currently in primary is considered mandatory. So when we, would you propose um, a mandatory you know, amendment of the Education Act to also include a mandatory education prov- uh, provision for that to provide children up to a secondary level? Currently, we provide education from kindergarten at six, five, six years old up to 12. Mandatory is until 12 years old, but we have seen the higher number of dropouts from the secondary level. I think that uh, it's it's very necessary, uh, mandatory, but as well as one is uh, you you use the stick, yeah. Then you make it a mandatory for everyone to attend the school. The other thing is really um, the carrot is you have to think of innovative way of teaching, so that it excites children, it excites the students to want to learn, yeah. And, and there are many ways. Um, I do know that at one time they were experimenting on um, a group kind of learning together with um, encouraging individuals to grow in, at their own speed and, and, and having classes where you don't have ABCD, you know, uh, to classify who is the smartest to the, to the lowest, but you mix them, but you coach them accordingly. So, we need that kind of methods to uh, excite our children and we better work out fast because we are losing uh, a generation and if we don't, um, I'm afraid that, you know, um, if you talk about in 10 years time, our economy may not grow because we don't have the personnel to actually be able to cope with our economy. All right. So that sums up. Thank you so much, Ravi. Listen to the full podcast of Bichara Mingo Ini on Spotify, Anchor, and Google Podcasts. Follow me on Twitter at I'mNomGo for the latest updates on current affairs and stories.